Okay, so for this video in the Evidences series, I wanted to talk about baptisms for the dead and how it is an evidence of the restoration of the original Christian church, how it was practiced in the original Christian church, and talk a little bit about how it solves the Christian dilemma. So let's start with that. First of all, um, if you look on the screen, there are a bunch of scriptures I wanted to share, just quick little snippets, uh, all from the New Testament, on how salvation is through Christ only. If you look here, He shall save His people from their sins. My spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, born in the city of David, a Savior which is Christ. World through Him might be saved. This is indeed the Christ, the Savior. Whosoever shall call on the Lord shall be saved. None other name whereby we may be saved. Him hath God exalted to be a prince and a savior. Did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer? Should us be for salvation unto the ends of the earth? We have redemption through his blood. Believe on the Lord, thou shalt be saved. We shall be saved by his life. So from these verses, it's clear that it's only through Jesus Christ that we are able to achieve salvation through his grace and through his sacrifice for us. So the Christian dilemma is what of those who do not hear of Jesus Christ. And I'll give you an example. Um, if you go to a website called gotquestions.org, uh, it's a non-denominational uh, group that uh, try to answer biblical questions. In fact, uh, if you look at their mission statement and who they are, it says that they're a ministry of dedicated and trained servants who have a desire to assist others in their understanding of God, scripture, salvation, and other scriptural, spiritual topics. We are Christian, Protestant, Evangelical, theologically conservative, and non-denominational. All of our answers are reviewed for biblical and theological accuracy by our staff. So, if you were to type in the question, what happens to those that never hear about Jesus? This is the answer that you'll get. And this is, it's, there's a detailed uh, description, but this is the summary at the end. If we assume that those who never hear the gospel are granted mercy from God, we will run into a terrible problem. If people who never hear the gospel are saved, it is logical that we should make sure no one ever hears the gospel. The worst thing we could do would be to share the gospel with a person and have him or her reject it. If that were to happen, he or she would be condemned. People who do not hear the gospel must be condemned, or else there is no motivation for evangelism. Why run the risk of people possibly rejecting the gospel and condemning themselves when they were previously saved because they had never heard the gospel? So, that tells you the struggle that uh, many have in trying to answer this question. Um, the other issue is baptism. And here, if you look up in the uh, Latter-day Saints scripture, uh, topical guide, baptism, essential, um, here are some uh, scriptures all from the New Testament again. Jesus coming to John for baptism. Suffer it to be so now to fulfill all righteousness. Teach all nations, baptizing them. Jesus came and was baptized of John. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Reject the counsel of God being not baptized. And I love this one. To Nicodemus, Jesus said, Except a man be born of water, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Repent and be baptized every one of you. Command them to be baptized. Be baptized and wash away thy sins. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Save us by the washing of regeneration. Baptism doth also now save us. Now we understand that Christ, after um, he was crucified and, and uh, was resurrected, that he went and preached to the, to the suffering spirits in um, prison. It says here in 1 Peter, Chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. First Peter 4, 6 says, for, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. So they were able to hear the message of Jesus Christ even after death. Now what about baptism? This critical ordinance that was necessary for salvation according to Jesus Christ. Well, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 29, Paul says, Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? Now this is a very confusing verse for uh, Christian churches to understand or interpret. And some have thought, well, maybe Paul was denouncing or condemning the practice. 
I'll share a, a snippet here about Paul from Robert Millet, a professor of ancient scripture at BYU. This was an article in the Ensign. He says about this verse, he says, Paul was most sensitive to blasphemy and far, false ceremonialism. Of all people, he would not have argued for the foundation truth of the resurrection with a questionable example. He obviously did not feel that the principle was disharmonious with the gospel. Then, uh, to give you an example of a biblical commentary here, here's the Jerome biblical commentary. Uh, the first letter to the Corinthians by Richard Kugelman. Uh, he says here on this verse, Paul alludes to a practice of the Corinthian community as evidence for Christian faith in the resurrection of the dead. It seems that in Corinth, some Christians would undergo baptism in the name of their deceased non-Christian relatives and friends, hoping that this vicarious baptism might assure them a share in the redemption of Christ. So very clear uh, there, that that's what it's talking about. And in fact, if you look at modern day translations, they've even become uh, more intense in the clarification of this. Here's a quote of that from the New English Bible. Again, there are those who receive baptism on behalf of the dead. Why should they do this? If the dead are not raised at all, what do they mean by being baptized on their behalf? Okay, so a couple of quick uh, snippets from uh, early Christian fathers. Um, the Shepherd of Hermas was a Christian literary work of the late 1st or mid-2nd century, and it was considered a valuable book by many Christians and considered canonical scripture by some of the early Christian fathers, uh, such as Arrhenius. Quote, These apostles and teachers who preached the name of the Son of God, having fallen asleep in the power and faith of the Son of God, preached also to those who had fallen asleep before them, and themselves gave to them the seal of the preaching. They went down, therefore, with them into the water and came up again, but the latter went down alive and came up alive, while the former, who had fallen asleep before, were dead, went down dead, but came up alive. Through them, therefore, they were made alive and received knowledge on the name of the Son of God. And Clement of Alexandria, uh, who lived from 150 to 215 AD, he also even referenced uh, maybe why this was uh, done in, as proxy. He said, um, they went down, therefore, into the water, and again ascended. But those who had fallen asleep descended dead, but ascended alive. Then, too, the more subtle substance, the soul, what we would call the spirit, could never receive injury from the grosser element of water. This practice then ended up uh, becoming banned at the Council of Carthage in 397 AD. It was viewed as those that were practicing it as heretics and Gnostics and it was uh, banned from practice, and therefore there are no major Christian religions practicing this today, but it was restored in 1840 uh, by the prophet Joseph Smith, and it is one of those things, the very last verses in the Old Testament say that before the second coming of Jesus Christ, Elijah would come, and he would turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. I'll talk about that in another video about Elijah did come. This is part of this. Um, through this practice of baptism for the dead, the children turn to the fathers, and the fathers look to the children to do this. That's this video. Subscribe for more content.